Do we need to know everything? Would we be happier if there were certain things that we didn't know? These matters are addressed in this wonderful movie of a samurai family and life in feudal Japan. Love and Honor is the last film in Yoji Yamada's Samurai Trilogy. It released in 2006, just two years after The Hidden Blade. Just like with the previous two films, it was also written by the excellent writer Shuhi Fujisawa. Fujisawa's stories are very unique and he's capable of using high drama instead of action to push his stories forward while still making it as interesting as possible. The Twilight Samurai, The Hidden Blade, and Love and Honor all don't have that many sword fights or action, but when it does show a fight, you never forget it, and there's a lot of weight behind it. A character doesn't just simply kill someone and have nothing happen. There's a sense of realism and stakes, and perhaps this credit should also go to the director that's capable of bringing Fujisawa's work to life. Before I get into what this story is about, I first want to say that I love the Zatoichi films. I'm a big fan of Katsu and all that he does. But I will be the first to admit that those films are kind of ridiculous. I mean, a completely blind swordsman who's capable of taking on dozens of opponents in each film and he wins every time is highly unlikely. Maybe. But in this film, we actually get a blind swordsman that's actually believable. The film begins with Shinojo Memura, who works for his lord as a food taster. Or more like, a poison taster. They basically taste the food to see if it's safe for the master to eat. But one day, every poison taster's greatest fear comes true, and Shinojo is, well, poisoned. While this ends up saving his master's life, it also ends up nearly killing him and leaving him completely blind. And as sometimes occurs in tough feudal Japan societies, Shinojo is left without a purpose and the prospect of losing his income. So that's some thanks for saving his master's life. But uncharacteristic of many samurai films, soon Shinojo learns that his master has not forgotten about him. And he's decided to keep giving him his original salary. So, you're probably wondering right now how this ends up resulting in Shinojo fighting someone Zatoichi blind samurai style. Well, I don't want to spoil this awesome story so you're just gonna have to watch it. I will say that this film is great in many ways. For one, it's different. It's not at all like other Chinbara films, and it's definitely not like any Hollywood or superhero movie. This is how Zatoichi and Daredevil should have been told. I've never been more excited nor nervous for a fight in any movie besides this one. There's this fight and it has real stakes and real drama, but most importantly is you want the protagonist to succeed. We watch him suffer something that most samurai or even people would end their lives for. Shinojo not only lives as a blind samurai, which is a pointless existence, but something else much worse happens actually, and I also won't spoil that, but in spite of all this misfortune, he still continues to fight on. He's a real person that struggles, and it makes for a great message for people that live with a disability. No matter what, you must live on. All the acting is very believable, and it just looks natural. The lead actor portrays the suffering blind samurai very well, and he earns our sympathy. His loyal wife, Kayo, is also a standout performance here. You could say that her struggle proves equal to her husband's. The film's main message is in its title. Which is more important, love or honor? This is the ultimate dilemma that the main character is faced with. It is a fascinating look at life, duty, and honor during the samurai era and it's very well worth watching. This film makes you question if knowledge is a good thing, and sometimes knowing too much causes us to suffer. It really is a one-of-a-kind film, and I honestly like this movie better than The Twilight Samurai and The Hidden Blade. This film basically broke me, and it made me feel something. And for a film to give you an emotional response, 
highlights its greatness. It's also the film I find myself thinking about the most afterwards, and to me that also is an indicator of its greatness. It's funny because this movie in the trilogy is actually the one with the least amount of fighting and action. And I'm usually the person to really like sword fights and lots of action. I will say though, the beginning is pretty slow, but it builds up and it pays off. I found myself glued to the movie, never wanting it to end. Love and Honor is a wonderful story and it has a very exciting conclusion. It also has a very touching love story and kind of an odd one. It's well performed, has beautiful scenery and musical, it's one of the best samurai films I've ever seen and I've seen quite a few so it's well worth your time. Yoji Yamada is an outstanding director and has proved he's a real deal with not just one great film but an entire trilogy. He's capable of using high drama instead of action to push his plot forward and it all just feels so natural. It also helps that the cinematography in all three films is beautiful, showing Japan's beautiful nature and seasons. It's safe to say that I love this trilogy and I'll rank all these films in my top 10 samurai films of all time. Thank you Mr. Yamada, I will definitely be checking out your other films and I'm no doubt going to own your samurai trilogy on the best format that I could find. Anyway, thanks for watching and if you want to own this trilogy, you can go get it at SamuraiDVD.com.